Nurseries and kids' rooms are spaces where imagination and comfort come together, creating magical environments for growth and play. Today, we're visiting 17 enchanting children's rooms that perfectly blend whimsy, sophistication, and cozy charm perfect for little ones. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. To shop items inspired by this and other Homeworthy episodes, be sure to check out the product links below for amazing furniture, accessories, and more. So this is my son's room. This is deemed the train room. So we have lots of little train details. When he was little, he loved trains. Um, so we have lots of details. Okay, Willie's gonna join us again in here. Um, so this room was a total transformation. Um, the only thing that we left was the baseboards. <clears throat> so first I added this chair rail, and then I added the box molding on the top and the bottom, as well as the crown molding. Um, we did a custom cut rug in here with all of the stars, and then we paired that opposite the ceiling um, for the star wallpaper. So that's a really fun touch. Um, and then we worked in lots of train art and lots of customizations. The bed is actually uh, my grandmother's bed from her house. So we worked in that vintage element of an old double bed at grandma's house. Um, and then we worked in all of the train art. Um, and then again, just some really custom details with this really cute lampshade. It has this gathered kind of pleated uh, raw edge here, almost like a ruffle. And so I had, I found two of these at an estate sale. And so they were the perfect spot in here for the blue. Um, even though it's a boy's room, I did the scalloped in here again. Uh, and this is actually a two-tone scalloped and we matched that with an applique. So we took some blue fabric and did the applique and then worked that in to the custom bench cushion here and did that as the cording. Um, so we did four custom Roman shades in here, cordless Roman shades. We did the striped with the camel and white striped and the blue pom-pom detail. And then we matched those to the um, little window seat um, striped and then we matched the cording to the applique on the pillows. So lots and lots of just well thought out details. Um, funny story with, about wallpaper again is this room, I actually started wallpapering the ceiling. It's an old house, none of the walls are even, no, nothing is square, nothing is plum. Um, and I started wallpapering and it looked really, really bad. It was bubbling up off the ceiling and I just, I think it was, a. It, it, I got about halfway through wallpapering the ceiling by myself and um, it was not going well. And so I had to take it all down, re-sand the ceiling, and it was these little bitty stars was the original design. And so I was really bummed because I couldn't use the paper that I wanted to use, um, and I had not picked out a rug yet. So I found this paper, I started installing it, and then I found this rug. And proportionally, the stars on the ceiling are about the same size as the stars on the rug, so it was really meant to be, the stars aligned, if you will, um, because it was really meant to be. Um, to work in all the star details. Um, I'll show you a couple other pieces. Um, this is from the 1960s, 1970s. Uh, this is Henry Link Valley High. Um, this was a collection that Henry Link did and they were kind of yellow in tone with real brass pulls. And they're kind of hard to find vintage pieces on the market and I found two. Um, I found one, this piece had been painted and then the other piece was in original form. And then I painted them this beautiful blue, blue dragon. I painted them this beautiful blue color, um, which was kind of, it was a hard thing to do because blue walls, um, which is, I, I know everybody's gonna wanna ask paint color. This is Sherwin-Williams Sleepy Blue at 50% color matched to the Benjamin Moore Advanced Line Satin Paint. <laughs> Um, and this, and the blue dragon, uh, paint, uh, I found that it was, it was kind of hard, but what I did was I took the fabric and the cording. I got the color the closest I could to the cording color. And I painted both of the, uh, uh, case pieces in here, the blue dragon. So I'll show you another one. We have a second one. 
over here. And this was a dresser and mirror combo and they're both painted in the exact same blue. Um, we did really nice um, custom monogram uh, storage baskets with the little scallop detail there. And just some little display pieces. Again, we have more train art. Um, and then we also, also found this at an estate sale. This is a train stamp collection. So this is not our collection, but just a, a vintage piece of art that I found with uh, all train stamps, which is really cute. And then a railroad crossing um, lamp for the full train theme in here. So I actually used this exact desk um, as a getting ready area. It's a vanity with a mirror. Um, I used this um, in my closet for a really long time. And then I found this huge desk at an estate sale and it was hand carved and I had nowhere for it to go. And so I switched. So my son got my leftovers. He was asking for a desk in his room. And so this is the perfect um, desk for a child. It's, it, it's smaller and compact and fits in the corner of his room nicely. And so um, he, he has all of his little art supplies in here. So I'll take you to my other son's room next, the football room. So this room is the football room. So all things vintage football in blue. Um, so I wallpapered this room in this um, football wallpaper. We got a matching pillow and matching sheets. And um, the original drapes in the dining room were actually these. I got these made with a Greek key in the blue and to match the hydrangea drape wallpaper. And I just, it, it wasn't sitting right with me. And so I said, I want to put them in the football room when I did this room. And so that's perfect. Just a little blue Greek key trim on the D on um, all the drapes. And then these chairs um, were actually an estate sale find, which was perfect in here. So I did the gingham rug and um, the gingham chairs. And so that's perfect, uh, the blue on blue and the gingham on gingham. Uh, tones. So we did a little twin size bed um, for my younger son. Uh, the football sheets, as I mentioned, and then we did a monogram pillow, just like I did for my other son, um, in an applique. So bringing in the light blue and the dark blue in the wallpaper. Um, gave the mirrors a little makeover. They were uh, uh, just like a cream color and painted those blue. Um, and then the nightstands are just like a vintage find. Um, and I have him all of these little boxes, storage boxes that he can keep all of his little treasures and toys and dinosaurs in. <laughs> and these are his favorite thing to do is to drive me crazy with these lamps that touch on and off. So great target find. My friend actually found these, I think at Goodwill for me, she found these football lamps. I think they're like old pottery wine or something. So we found little football lamps. Um, we did a custom ginger jar in here with our last name and he loves dogs. So we did a little Staffordshire dog, other football artwork. Um, and then each of my boys has this little baby banner from like the day they were born with all of their birth stats as art. So that's really fun. Um, we also have other football art throughout the room. We did um, this little football field and vintage football players. So that's really sweet. So this is our nursery and I will be honest and say that it is not completely finished yet. Obviously we still have a little bit more time before the baby gets here, but this has been one of the most fun rooms for me to decorate. It's been a process collecting things. I have been collecting baby things for a long time and I am so thrilled to be able to finally use them. So we actually have, I would say in this room, more than any of the other rooms, a good mixture of new and old things. Um, this crib is new and it's from Crate and Barrel. Um, and I love the Jenny Lind style with the poles. It's a really beautiful maple wood, great quality. And this was one of the pieces that we wanted to buy newer because regulations and rules with cribs do change over time. And then another new piece that we bought was our rocking chair. Um, and this is from Namesake. I knew that I wanted something patterned. I love 
the idea of using greens and blues and reds and yellows um, in a little girl's room. I think you don't have to have it one way or the other, but I just wanted to make sure that the whole room was really, really colorful. I love children's rooms that are full and colorful and bright and really happy feeling versus plain um, and more muted tones. So I wanted to make sure that I brought in tons of color and one of the ways that we were able to do that was with the wallpaper. Um, this is a beautiful wallpaper from Sandberg that Eric and I put up. Actually, I would say just the last week was when we kind of finished this room. Um, and he and I did it together. We've kind of become pros at this point because we've hung up a lot of wallpaper in this house. But I loved the subtle little yellow flowers. Um, I think it just adds this kind of childhood charm, but it's not overly girly or overly bright. Um, and I love that about it. We also have another antique English pine piece here. As you can tell, I'm a little bit obsessed with English pine, but this is a nice little cabinet that as the baby grows, we can store more toys and things like that as well. And probably my favorite feature of the room are the bookshelves. So these are actually window boxes, like valances that go over a window. But Eric and I repurposed them to be shelving. And I wanted to make sure that we had a place to display books really beautifully, to store little knickknacks and trinkets and things that are important, things that we've collected for the baby change the decor out over the years and so it's also a great styling opportunity um, and we really really love having the shelves it's great storage and i think it adds a ton of charm to the room i actually thrifted this giraffe almost two years ago um, eric and i were trying to get pregnant for about two years it took us a while it was a really long process and before I knew that it was going to be such a tedious process, I had already begun to thrift things. And this little giraffe is just like a sweet reminder to me that after two years, we were able to pull him out of storage and use him in a nursery, and it's been such a blessing. So I've had a few people tell me that our daughter will be scared of it, but I'm choosing to think that she will think of it as a nice friend that's living in her room and is not something that's scary. Um, but I'm a big animal person. Obviously, I loved stuffed animals as a kid. So I wanted to add some of that into this space for our daughter. Another one of the features in this room that I love and I also get asked about a lot are these curtains. So these are fabulous green gingham curtains that I actually found at Goodwill. Many people will be disappointed by that because I've had so many people ask me where I got them. They're exquisitely made and I got eight panels for I believe it was like $15 um, of these incredible curtains and I've used them in the living room and then I got to use them again in here. The color is perfect. It brings out the green in the wallpaper. Um, and I'm just obsessed with these and honestly want to use them every chance I get in every room possible. So this is the Moorish room that we call with the twin room. Um, this is Mallorquin silk, uh, silk linen mix that some a guy in Palma, his father, he had a business and he made it. And then the son took over and made fabric. This canopy came from um, a house in Dea, another house of a friend, and she thought it was for putting out the windows when there was fiestas. And I thought, no, it really is a bed canopy. And then we put it up and it just looks so fun. It's kind of floating, um, but we, I love the, the edges and it sort of make, puts me in mind of uh, Venice or something, you know, it's like a gondola or something. And then we have, this is probably why the, re the reason the room, we call it the Moorish room is because of this lady dressed up in the Moorish clothes. Um, and we have this uh, old fabric that I really love that 
are made into these lampshades. So they're another thing that's perfect, but not perfect. So we have these twin beds. Um, we made twin headboards out of the local fabric. A little bit of gingham again, which I really love, but just makes me feel it's so provincial and homely. Um, and then this, these cushions that were made from typical traditional Mallorquin skirts. And this was the base of the skirt and we made them into cushions because I just love the fabric. But the skirt wasn't practical anymore. I made the, the lamps to sort of um, go with the style and it's a little bit Regency style and the lampshades I also made. We did this with the wardrobe to, um, for me, anything old wood now sort of can be a bit of a sucker of light. So we did this just to be a bit of fun, to hide it. This is one of my favorite things. This is a decoupage trunk, which is in the George II style, it's English, but just so faded and imperfect. I absolutely love this style of furniture. Uh, these chairs are from England and they've been re this one's been repainted and the, the other one hasn't been repainted. But I just love the red, the splash of red. Um, and this one's much more aged and more original. These floors again uh, are original and they have a board, you know, they're really something really special. It's been thought about. Uh, it's, this room is crazy as well because it has a, a big bow in the room. So where the bed is, you can't notice it now, but with age, it's, it's moved and the, the, there is a shape to the floor. This is Gilbert. He's going to come upstairs to the studio. Come on then, Gilbert. Come on, Gilbert. Welcome to my daughter's room. This is my daughter, or our daughter Vivian's room. She's three and a half. And it's truly like such a, like a happy, girly space, but also childish, but also like young adult at the same time. I feel like she's really going to be able to grow into this space. So this whole room started with the wallpaper. I feel like when I was little, I had floral wallpaper and I wanted to do something similar for Vivian. And so we picked this like very girly, kind of like not too pink, not too blue, just kind of very like subtle wallpaper. And then we did a matchback um, fabric for her bed frame, which I think is very charming and pretty. As you'll see when you see our little boy's room he has a chair in his room so for my daughter i wanted to mix it up and do a really cute little couch she often reads here she takes naps she does all the things on this and i feel like maybe when she gets older if she needed a desk in her room this would be a really nice place for a desk but for now like a nice love seat where we can like read stories at night works very well. I want to point out one of my favorite things about Vivian's room is her bathroom. It is so girly and the most fun thing. Like I mentioned for the green room, I wanted a green marble. For my daughter's room, I wanted a pink marble because what is more girly than pink marble? So we kind of went with this like, peachy pink Beverly Hills Hotel marble. And I think it's so fun. And we did a pretty color to match back to the, to the marbles. Cute little, like just a little knob, little brass knobs. I did brass in her bathroom just to make it like a little bit different throughout the rest of the house. Besides the kitchen, we have just polished nickel, but I think it's just so cute. And one thing that I have admired for years, even when my son was born, were these little bow sconces. I think they're just the cutest thing ever. And so I knew immediately that I wanted to do those bow sconces when we figured we were gonna redo this bathroom and move into the house. 
This bathroom actually used to belong to another guest room that is next door. Originally in this house, my son's room and my daughter's room were connected via a large bathroom and they were Jack and Jill, but having a boy and a girl, I wanted Vivian to have her own space. And so we knocked out this wall, we added the double doors and we made her own bathroom for her. Vivian loves this bathroom so much. She has cute little drawers filled with like all of her bows. She has her pretend makeup, which she does her morning glam every morning. And by glam, I mean she puts her pretend lipstick and pretend blush on before she goes to school. Pretty cute. What do I love most about my home? You guys, I love everything about it. Everything. There's not a room that I don't care for. Actually, there's one thing I don't like about it. Um, we've got a tiny closet in the back that I'm about to like redo and wallpaper. Like that's how like crazy this house is. But I, I just love how everything is like so pretty. I think it's a beautiful house. I love that it's on the water, which there's a, there's a pond in the back, which is pretty cool. It's very like whimsical for our kids. Our kids can run around and they can play, but they can't hurt anything. And so I think that that's something that's really cool about this home is it, it looks beautiful, it is beautiful, but it's also like very functional for a family to live in it. And we do use every single room. Welcome to Ralph's room. When we started designing this space with Lonnie, I knew I wanted Ralph to have a similar color palette as his sister Vivian. We've kind of kept with like the sky blues and the light blues, but I also wanted it to feel like he's really gonna also grow into this space. And so we decided to do uh, this upholstered bed for him in this like lovely sky blue fabric, the window pane sky blue. And one of my favorite things that Process Home did were these bedside tables. I feel like he is going to have them forever. Or if he doesn't have them forever, I will have them forever because they are so refined, so classic, also masculine. They're lovely for a six-year-old's bedroom, in my opinion. One thing that we did keep from the original owner of the house was the paneling on the wall. We redid, we refinished the paneling, but I thought it was so cool to do something different or keep something different than my daughter has wallpaper, my son has this like really beautiful wood paneling. Um, something that I've mentioned throughout this home tour is art. And I mentioned it down in the office, the Porsche photos that we had done whenever, before Ralph was born, and this was another one. This is actually my husband's arm. And again, we had a photographer do this, and this was in his original nursery. And so I just think it's a really cool way to make something your own and make it feel like very personal. Um, so now Ralph has a really cool picture of his dad in one of his dad's favorite cars um, in his room, which I think is like very, it's really special. Something that's really fun is Ralph's fixture. This is actually his original fixture from his nursery when he was born in 2017. It's actually moved with us to three different houses. I just, I think I get really attached to fixtures. I mean, I still have um, a piece of a, a light fixture from when I was a little girl, so maybe that's a whole other thing that I need to dive into. But this is an antique. It was actually originally brass, and we had it sprayed like or paint matched to the original like sky blue color that was in his nursery which is something that I didn't even know you could do until, you know, probably six years ago. But you can take all these like really cool light fixtures and if the color's off or if you want it to be an actual color or the finish is off, you can change it to anything. So this was a, a shiny brass and now it's a lovely sky powder blue. I just think it's really cool that you can, you can literally paint anything or change anything with just like a little bit of time and effort. It, you know, it's very, makes it unique. 
So this is the bathroom that I was talking about. It originally was a Jack and Jill and it was a shared bathroom which connected my daughter's room and my son's room. And so we walled it off. We ended up doing like a really cool mirror so it doesn't look like it was a breeze through. But this is his bathroom. I would take this bathroom. It has so much storage, has the double sink, Something that I think is really cool is that it has a bathtub and it has a separate shower. So it really was built to function for like multiple children, but now Ralph just gets to enjoy it. So that's pretty fun. And he has so many little like storage spaces that were here. I just, you know, put my own spin on it, if you will. We the wood paneling was originally like a wood and so I had it all refinished and painted to white dove, which is the house paint. This is my daughter Maxie's room. This was actually the former primary before the house was renovated and being the only girl in the firstborn, she lucked out with quite a spacious bedroom. Her bed is from Oyster Creek Studios. I had a day bed growing up and this is actually a trundle. You can custom design it with them. And my son, we joke, never sleeps in his own bed because they have sleepovers in here with the trundle all the time. Her fabric is Cole and Sons Hummingbird and we've taken it from fabric to bed to this little table and chair play set that she got for her first birthday and she is seven now and this is still where she does all her arts and crafts and plays games and reads and so we made little custom cushions to match with that and it kind of brings out the colors from her milagro rug as well these bird panels are from cherish and then this art my friend Brittany Stuckey made for her and this was her seventh birthday gift and she kind of got to pick out everything she wanted. Um, so she has our dog, my sister's dog, and it's very colorful because that's what she loves. And right here, this piece of custom furniture we got when we were pregnant with her and I matched it to my wedding dress. I wanted that lavender hue and it's been great for seven years framed a scarf above it and this is another berry bowl that we've used this is her little seashell collection from when we go to the beach this mirror is Murano glass again another round top find um, I got it at Blue Hills and round top and I always think that they have the best deal on Murano glass and then this is the Love Shack Fancy Pottery Barn little jewelry box collaboration and she is her mother's daughter and loves to layer jewelry, just as I do. This is another Colores Collective basket. She always has books and magazines out, and so had to throw it in a basket to kind of keep it neat and tidy in here. And then going over here is probably um, my favorite DIY project. I love to make toys for my kids or um, take handmade toys and bring them back to life because I just think it's so much more special that way. And this American Girl doll house has quite the story. So there was a girl in Fort Worth that we, I think we danced at the same dance studio and her grandfather made it for her. And then when she outgrew it, she gave it to another dancer at the dance studio. And then about 18 months ago, we got a call from her mom saying, okay, we've outgrown American Girl doll. Does Maxie want this? And so we took it and we had to like saw it apart to get it in the house. Um, but I just really wanted to honor the fact that um, it still had so much life left and that it had had so many little girls play with it and that a grandfather had made this for his granddaughter. And so my daughter and I had a lot of fun doing this. We repainted it. I took wallpaper scraps from other wallpaper projects we had in our home. Um, I took from friends. I asked them, I said, do you have any leftover wallpaper? And we wallpapered it. We shingled the roof. I called my friend Bridget with Mila Grow and I said, okay, this is random. I'm going to ask you, can I have some rug samples? Can I purchase them from you? And 
it's just a really beautiful mix of old and new. So some of the American Girl furniture was mine growing up. Um, like the light fixtures were from the prior little girls that played with it. And then my daughter and I have loved sourcing little bits and pieces for it. Um, like some of the decor she's painted at little pottery stores. And so each room has kind of changed over time used to be a school room and I joke that my daughter has maybe even more fun than I do decorating each room and then this is her little reading area and my daughter loves ballet and dance and so my mom when I signed my daughter up for her first dance class she gifted me a framed pair of my first ballet slippers and so then I framed her first ballet slippers right underneath and now I hoard all of her old ballet shoes um, she'll say mommy I outgrew this pair I need another pair and I have a trunk of them and I'm like well you don't know how many little girls you'll have one day and then I have to do the same thing for you so I'm very sentimental in how I decorate and you can see that kind of in every little space this light fixture was another one Kings Lane find I love all their quick ship pieces if you are in a pinch and then this is her bookshelf that goes with her reading nook. These boot vases I designed with Lauren Haskell and it was probably one of my favorite projects that I've done with my blog because our audience and customers went crazy for them. They would sell out within 30 seconds to a minute each launch um, and maybe one day we'll bring them back. But it was really fun to see because we thought it was like the perfect little hostess gift or something to put on a bookshelf. And then this print, um, I love Born and Raised Studios for their heirloom prints and they can also have artists paint them. And so we had this made when she was about two. My son has one when he was two as well in his room. And of course we have a Barbie dream house because what seven-year-old girl's bedroom is complete without one? I would describe my style as heavily influenced by the three women that taught me what home means, my mom and my two grandmothers. My mom is a pattern mixing queen, so I love lots of prints everywhere. My Mimi owned a flower shop in Oklahoma, and so I have so many fond memories of going with her on Saturday mornings with a bag of donut holes to work at the flower shop. So I always have fresh flowers everywhere. And then my Nana was the garden club president of Atlanta, and she threw the most amazing parties, but she was never stressed out about it. She would have 70 people over on Christmas Eve, and I loved that about her. And so I love to have a home with slip covered furniture, things that people feel like they can just sit on with a glass of wine and no one's worried about it being too fussy. And then I will take you into her bathroom. So her bathroom is actually modeled after the farmhouse that Mackenzie Childs has in Aurora, New York. It's one of my favorite places to go and get a lot of inspiration. And in the farmhouse upstairs, they have this pink and white bathroom with butterflies and lots of little Mackenzie Childs pieces. And so the first time I went, my daughter was one and we were looking at this house and I knew I didn't want to fully renovate this bathroom. I didn't want to invest too, too much into it because I just didn't know what our family setup would look like with more children. And so I put in this Ralph Lauren wallpaper, which I think is discontinued. I'm always looking on eBay for extra rolls of it. So if anyone has any, I will buy from you. Um, and then we put the Mackenzie Childs butterflies up her Wheezy towels, I love Wheezy as a company. Um, Gina Bowhill, she has beautiful bow tissue boxes and little trash bins and it matches the wallpaper. So I have that in here as well. And I just love that I could model it after one of my favorite places. This little Tuffet is Petite Keep as well. She doesn't just make um, trunks, she also makes little keepsake gifts. And then this bow frame, my friend Emily, she had a little shop that had the most beautiful frames for gifting. And when I found this pink one, I knew it matched the wallpaper perfectly. These shadow box pieces are also Mackenzie Childs as well. So you've got the softness of the pink bows, but I think the fun and punchy 
traditional black and white stripes that they do. I would love to show y'all the nursery. I have not shared that on my blog yet, so I'll take you in there. And on our way to the nursery, you will see this piece of art from Elizabeth McLaurin. She is one of our best family friends. She married my best childhood friend, and she does beautiful Texas Plains art. This is our baby boy's nursery. He is due in about six weeks. There is nothing I love more than designing a nursery, and I like to take those same sentimental design processes into a baby's room as well. So when I was early pregnant with him, I was doing a Bible study on the book of Psalms, and I really wanted to have a focus of trees in his room for what the trees represent in the book of Psalms, and so I found this Schumacher wallpaper, and I think it's new because I really couldn't find any photos of it online and took a big <laughs> guess if it would work or not, but I've loved it. And then there's also little notes of Peter Pan throughout the room. So when I found out I was pregnant with another boy, my friend Emily, she has the same setup of girl, boy, boy. And she told me, she said, tell your two older kids your family's like Peter Pan. And so um, you'll see I have like my Peter Pan book as a child, um, a little vintage Peter Pan figurine I got at an antique shop. So his acrylic crib was passed down from Big Brother. This was from my friend Hillary Store's Baby by Designs in Fort Worth, which is no longer, but I loved it for my son, and I am excited to use it here. I think it's really nice for tight spaces because you just see through it. Um, the pillows and the drapes are from Holly Daly with Sarah Coleman Designs. She kind of really brought all the art and everything together with it. And art this was also another blue hills find from round top my husband joked when i found out he said what is the b for because his name is hunt and i said oh it's b for baby this was another hand-me-down furniture from big brother and sister there's this was their restoration hardware bookshelf but i have loved filling it up for this baby this was actually a fisher price circus from my friend carly's husband she jokes, she's like, it's so old, are you sure you want it? And I'm like, yes, I love things like that. Um, and I have another Lauren Haskell boot vase. And this was my little Peter Rabbit bank when I was a baby. And then we have had these Lucite shelves in here for I think as long as we've lived here. And it's a mix of my books from when I was little and different books that the kids have collected um, while we have been waiting for him. And then this changing table is also restoration hardware. This art is from Simple Things Furniture. That was from a vintage Peter Pan book. And this is Mary Jane McDonald. My children each have an art piece from her with their names. And she takes into consideration your nursery design, little things about your child. And so um, when I found out I was pregnant, my kids kept calling him baby bear and then brother bear and so I told her we had to have some bears in it. This is another Caloris Collective basket. I have dozens throughout the home and I have it for his blankets. Uh, this stool is one of my favorite fabrics. I had it in my son's nursery and room and just passing it down. And then this lamp is actually a Pottery Barn find, but I love to take something like a Pottery Barn find and then have a custom lampshade made with it to kind of make it your own. Um, and then this mirror is from Bone & Co. in Round Top, which is a restaurant, but they also have like a little boutique in there. And my husband and I went in, and we were grabbing a pastry and I looked at the waitress and I said, can I, can I buy this mirror off the wall? And she was like, sure, I guess anything's for sale. And my husband was pretty mortified. And I said, hey, anything is for sale. So we took that home. <laughs> um, and then this rocker is from Oilo Studio. I love the texture of it. I think that his room can be pretty traditional, but the texture of it softens it a bit. And then this Burlwood side table I also had custom made for my son's nursery. And then these are his 
first little mirror and Crosby boots. And then um, this is another Cowtown clay piece. So he has his brother and his sister's hands on this little dish. And I will show you his closet. So Inspired Closets is a closet company in Fort Worth and I love using them. They come in, they measure the amount of clothing you have, what exactly you need to store. It's a really, really custom process that um, I used for my own closet and have just been so pleased with it. So I knew since he had a tighter space, but a lot of hand-me-downs from Big Brother, um, that I wanted something really, really functional for this space. So <laughs> it's really tight in here, but I mean, there's even a boot shelf. There's just, we've got, maximum storage in small real estate in here. My favorite part about my home, I think is just a ranch style home for a family. I can be in the kitchen, I see my children playing, I always know where they are, it's cozy, it's a smaller home, but I know where the action is at all times and those sight lines are really important to me. I think what gives a home soul is knowing that the owner and the people that lived in it picked out different things. That was something that Rebecca Proctor also really instilled in me with design and how you are furnishing your home and decorating it, how you never want it to look like you just went to one store or one brand, but that you collected it not only over the years, but generationally. So um, I have antiques that were my parents and I love knowing that I can tell that story to my guests while we're eating in the dining table. And I think that just gives a home soul. Last but not least for the bedrooms, we have my son Harry's room. And this was the room, um, I think this was my most viral blog post I ever had, his nursery. And it's really evolved as he's now almost four years old. And I think that's what children's rooms should do. So when I was pregnant with him, I really wanted like a Ralph Lauren equestrian theme. Um, my parents used to take us to New York City for Christmas growing up and I just remember being in the Ralph Lauren store when I was in high school and college with my dad and thinking, okay, if I ever have a little boy, I want his room to be like this. And so we started with a lot of different equestrian pillows and things, but as it has evolved, it's just turned into Harry. And Harry is my little Fort Worth boy that from the time he could walk, he would walk around in a diaper and boots. And so you will see touches of boots everywhere. So I'd say now it's Ralph Lauren meets Texas. Um, he's got his boot bases, um, the Mary Jane McDonald art, this lasso piece for his name, his first birthday party was my first rodeo. And my party planner somehow made this. I get asked about this all the time. And I'm like, my friend made it with silver lining events. Um, but we have loved having that on his wall. And then his shelf over here, and these are all very sentimental pieces. And the only thing he really touches is his car and his baseball. But down here, these were my grandfather's football pads when he was little. And then this little acrylic cowboy hat is from my best friend Becca's store, Hale House. And she uses it as a serving piece. And I was like, girl, we got boys. We've got to use them as baseball holders. And then my son loves cars. Um, when I found out I was pregnant with him, I framed a page out of my favorite childhood book, The Giving Tree. And I passed down all of my childhood books to him. Um, this is actually, this was my Tom Sawyer book from school growing up. And then this vase, this was the sweetest story. A blog reader messaged me when I was pregnant with him and shared that I was gonna do more of an equestrian room. And she said she found this at an estate sale and she just shipped it to me. And I thought that was so sweet of her to do. Over here, this um, dresser is from Restoration Hardware. His truck is from Groverly Wood. It's out of the UK and they make really, really cool, cool cars and barns if you need a custom gift. They're great. And then this was, my husband went to Texas Tech and this was his little helmet. And I sourced this flag off of Etsy um, and they frame them and they have tons of different ones that I have on my blog. His bedding, this blanket is from Courtney Barton out of Round Top. And if you live in Texas or somewhere with a warmer climate, I love her bedding because it's not too, too heavy. This is an Etsy find, an Etsy find. 
this get home and then over here we have that same piece of art that I got from the born and raised shoot that I did with both my children. I love children's rooms to look like children live there and they are their rooms and to see their toys. And so this is another petite keep trunk, but this is their mini and I use it to store all his little figurines. He loves superheroes. So this is really fun and you can close it when need be. Um, and while his sister has an American Girl doll house, he has a Buzz Lightyear house. So I made this for him for his birthday last year, I believe. Um, I felt like a crazy person spray painting all these pieces together and sourcing all these um, vintage Buzz Lightyear stickers on Etsy, but he loves it. And I love that it's small because he will carry and take this thing all throughout the house. He will take it to our little putting green outside. He will, he'll take a nap and he'll open the blinds and see if it's still daytime. And then he'll just wake up and he'll carry it out. And he says, mom, I want to take my Buzz house outside. So it's about as big as him, but it works. Okay, so um, now I'm gonna show you right off of our um, landing, my daughter's room. Welcome to my daughter's room. This room actually was um, previously designed in our first home and I essentially recreated it uh, when we moved because it was so special to me. It was my first daughter's room and um, I put just like a lot of thought and care into it. Um, this was about seven years ago. So she loved it. My husband, you know, said there's something about this. And um, soon after my business was born, creating nurseries and uh, kids rooms for other people. So that's how I got started in my second career as um, a designer. The starting point for this room was really this uh, Tebow uh, pattern that you see sort of everywhere. Um, it's a coordinating wall covering and fabric that's um, since been discontinued. So, um, you know, it features just like a really whimsical um, site and um, the color is just so bright and, and fun. So that sort of inspired the whole room. Um, I always love to pair super traditional things with elements of modernity, uh, something you find in all my projects and throughout my house. So uh, that's where the hot pink comes in. And um, you know, the rich velvet and the sort of modern um, pieces. So um, this is actually my daughter's crib. She is uh, no longer um, sleeping in it. She's um, six years old, so um, we just keep it in here for, you know, little slumber parties for my kids. But anyhow, um, I think uh, a really unique element to the space is this half tester um, drapery, which um, was made by a friend of mine in California. She specializes in um, children's furniture and drapery, and she's super talented, so I always love collaborating with her. These uh, brass um, dressers were found actually in um, downtown Detroit. We were at um, Eastern Market and I popped into a little antique store next door and I don't know if the man that had these for sale like even liked them much, but I had to have them and um, I just think that they're so unique. I struggled a lot with finding artwork at first when I was entering the children's um, design space because it's hard to find content that's appropriate for children but also have like a level of sophistication in, in the pieces. So I found this um, pencil um, drawing on an online auction and I just thought that um, you know it was so innocent and sweet and it's just like a moment like from a content perspective a moment that I really looked forward to um, expecting my first child so 
So um, mini pianos, always a hot commodity amongst the toddlers. Um, my husband and I joke that we, if we're looking for our two-year-old who's like a little devious and all of a sudden we start to hear, we know exactly where she is. All right, so um, we're gonna head through the Jack and Jill into my son's nursery. So this is my son's nursery. He is six weeks old, um, our fourth child, and um, the first boy. So I wanted to give him um, a really elegant um, room, um, but also, um, you know, just something that he can grow up into and I wanted to create some interest on the on the wall, so I added the um, the molding, and um, I'm sort of waiting a little bit to see what he likes and what his interests are before I really like adorn the room with more detail for him. Um, but you know, I just feel like it's like a really great neutral palette. Um, when you have such a big family, you tend to move in groups, so. Um, important to us to have kind of like a lounge um, element to our nurseries and our kids' rooms. So um, I had this day bed made. Another one of my um, favorite designers that I look to for a lot of inspiration actually created this bedding line recently with Cast Attacks. Um, Aaron Gates is the designer for um, the bedding. Um, and another, um, textile designer Katie Ritter recently collaborated with um, Wheezy, which produces um, really fresh, traditional embroidered towels and um, home accessories, collaborated on this little blanket here that we had his name embroidered on. So um, the crib is sort of a sad point for me because it's our last crib um, that we're going to have. And uh, my friend, Gail from California, uh, who owns the um, AFK Children's Furniture Company, made it for me. Um, I just think it's so beautiful and timeless. And, you know, I just, I try to procure pieces that are like really heirloom quality. I hope um, that um, it goes to someone else one day. And that's sort of how I look at a lot of, um, pieces that I procure for my clients as well. So um, the swivel chairs uh, are made from Coley Home, which is another up and coming um, furniture maker that's really um, sort of like taking a traditional um, framework and upholstery and sort of re-inspiring the process for designers. They offer like a lot of customization and um, super fast lead times. So when it came down to designing my child's room, uh, I was sort of late to the game because I was super busy with my client projects and um, Coley uh, turned these chairs around for me really fast. So um, the shades in here, I um, had made years ago and um, when my other daughter was living in this room. And so a uh, scallop uh, pattern is something that's um, sort of very current right now, but something that I've always loved. So um, I just feel like it adds an element of whimsy um, to a kid's space. And to be honest, I sort of even like it in adult spaces. <laughs> Let's head upstairs. I'm first gonna take you into our boys room that's right off the stairs. This is where my sons sleep. I love this space. So we have two little boys, they're 14 months apart. They're three and two right now. My two year old's still in a crib, but we're getting ready to transition him. And then we have these two twin beds. I love these, they came with the house. And I am in my vintage quilt era, so I, I found this seller on Marketplace who had all these beautiful old quilts and I feel like every bed needs a quilt. This is a philosophy of mine. And so I found uh, this one which is called Irish Chain and then this particular design is called Crown of Thorns. Um, and I love to do layer texture, lots of pillows, um, duvets. I just feel like you gotta have a cozy bed. So that's these two and I found this really sweet footstool 
at a local an antique shop called Midtown Antiques here in Stillwater. I love it. And this has just been perfect because right now I've got my older son in here and then we'll move it over when we move my younger son into this bed. My husband actually made that cabinet in shop class in high school and he was saving it, saving it, had it in storage. And when we moved in here, he said, this is the perfect spot and I love it. So we've got that filled with just some family photos and old wooden toys. A friend of mine actually made those silhouettes of the boys, um, my oldest one on the right when he was a baby and then um, my two-year-old. I feel like age two is perfect to do a silhouette because they still have that baby profile to them. It's very sweet. Um, and then last year, I feel like pleated lampshades were all the rage and I love them and I kept seeing them, them on Etsy for, you know, $200 and then I went to this thrift store and I bought mine for, I think, 50 cents or something. And the lady even gave me the light bulb that goes in there. So I laugh about that when I see these trends that get really um, expensive. I'm like, everyone just needs to come to the Midwest where stuff is cheap. So these antlers um, belong to my husband. We just added them. And I love um, just the color drenching of the walls in here. This color is called Dutch Tile Blue by Sherwin Williams. I believe it's their historic line. They have a historic line and I have been very happy with their paint. And then over here, um, I love this piece. This is actually just from Target, honestly, but this art, this is a reproduction of a um, classic piece called The Grateful Poor. And it reminds me so much of um, the Daily Bread painting that people seem to really love right now of the old man praying. Um, but this really spoke to me and to my heritage. So I had to add it to our home. I love it. Um, my son enjoys it too, who sleeps in this crib. Um, over here is their dresser. And this I also found on Marketplace. And the woman who sold that to me shared with me that it had been passed down in her family and originally purchased in Chicago. And then this obnoxious goose lamp just cracks me up. I don't know why. I just think it's just so funny and silly. Um, my boys love it. They get a kick out of it. So we've got that against that beautiful old etching, um, etching picture, which I've had up here for a little while. I just think it's really peaceful. Um, and over here I have little, um, shelves and I've got these samplers of my sons that have their birthday details and then just some photos of um, when I was expecting our second and then I love that photo of my second eating a, a peach he just cracks me up and then my little little brothers down there and then a newborn session of when my second son was born and I, I really wanted our painter painted the shelves too because I wanted it to feel very much like a built-in color drenched even our radiator I love that style right now and with our, um, you know, just very simple uh, linen curtain panels. I just thought it would be like an elegant and peaceful space. I would say for me, peaceful is always the vibe that I'm going for. And I'm, and oh, I have to share this with you too, because this is so cute. I mean, hello, the Timberwolves are doing very well right now. So we have to have a basketball over the door basketball hoop in every little boy's room, so. I love how that looks, even though it's not part of the vintage aesthetic, it's perfect for my sons. Yeah, so this crib is actually new, but it looks vintage. And with cribs, I love the look of vintage cribs, but I'm just personally not comfortable using them. So I always get new cribs for my babies, um, but it's iron and it's it's gorgeous. My, um, my in-laws got it for us when we were expecting our first. And so um, it's worked really well for our family, but I'll be sad when we have to pack it away and take it down. This is my oldest daughter's bedroom. So she gets her own room because she's the queen of the family. We have two queens, my oldest daughter and my youngest daughter, but they get their own rooms. But we have two beds in here because she likes to have a spot for when grandma comes to visit. Um, we love this space. It definitely has been challenging to decorate in here because of the size um, but I have found a way I think to make it cozy so added printed curtains which was definitely um, a kind of a 
a big move for me as a neutral girly, but I, I like these and I think they look really sweet in the space. I did color drenching on the walls in here too um, because I wanted, again, that really beautiful, saturated, um, very uh, just sort of like almost neutral flat color application. And I love the way it turned out. Um, these beds we actually, again, found at Marketplace and we plan to sand them down. But like with the boys, I really enjoy doing layers for bedding. So we've got uh, these quilts, which are actually new, but the duvet covers I found on eBay. So they're uh, Rachel Asheville Shabby Chic for Target, which was the first like home decor design brand I remember really loving. Back when I was in college, I really was, I've always been drawn to vintage revival style and like Laura Ashley and Victoria Magazine as a kid. Um, old Ralph Lauren too from the 90s is just like chef's kiss perfection. But I also loved this Rachel Ashwell line. And so when I found these on eBay, I was so happy to have them for my daughter's bedroom. And um, these pictures actually came from a friend of mine from college, her mom, um, had them in their home for many, many years, and they're just old Courier and Ives prints. We've got a spring and an autumn, which I think is so sweet, and those colors I do feel really are, are prevalent in this bedroom. Um, recently, we found this dresser. This was It's an antique dresser, but it was purchased at a shop where they had done all of the work to it, and then I had this... Um, hook and shelf made just on Etsy and had that painted as well. And I love just changing it up. Um, it's just a nice space to display things. I actually made this quilt for my daughter when she was a baby. Um, during the pandemic, I um, took just old, this is all vintage fabric and I, it's not perfect and a more, you know, skilled quilter would look at this and say, not great, but I was really proud to make it for her and I embroidered a little note on it too. Let's see if I can find that little heart. Um, it says love mama, January of 2020. So I made that for her and I usually hang that up there cause I just love it and I'm proud of that. And I have not made any quilts for any of my other kids but I'll get there. This piece is really special. So this is called a, I believe it's called a Schiffer robe. Um, these old um, armoires cabinets. I just think they're, again, so practical. So my daughter keeps her dress up clothes in here and then all kinds of stuff in the drawers. But I love the mirror and um, we've, you know, we've got all of our old Beatrix Potter and um, I have some, another photo of her that I'll take down and show you. This was taken again at our favorite apple orchard. This is from our last family session and I love it. Um, I'm also into I'm collecting for my kids these like little wooden animals. I just think they're really sweet. So we've got that up here. And then this book was actually mine when I was little. And I remember loving the illustrations. Um, it's called the Book of Wishes and Wishmaking. But I just, it was part of an old library. And the funny thing is it says Worthington Public Library in Worthington, Ohio. But my husband is actually from Worthington, Minnesota. So just feel like it's interesting, um, the coincidences of life. So I love that and have that up here for her. Um, she really enjoys having a spot to put all of her stuff, which is fun. Um, but yeah, this room, such a joy. And I would say my kids play 90% of the time in here because we keep a lot of toys in the closet and we've got our doll, her dollhouse out, of course. And beautiful bay windows. So she gets tons of light in here at this little table and chairs. This table actually was my husband's when he was little and I painted it, uh, another 2020 project and now it's perfect in here and I just think it's very sweet and same color as the walls. I color matched um, Faro and Ball's Calamine. I just really love that, very soft pale pink. I'd say everything's pretty durable and it's also like not precious, right? Like. Um, a lot of things are older and like sometimes there'll be scratches on the table and I'll just repaint them. But I often, again, I just thrift everything. And so if something does break, it's not a big deal. And I try not to have too much of an attachment to any material goods because it's just not important. Well, come into my nursery. This is where our little baby 
stays, our, our daughter Penny, she's smiling. Yeah, hi, honey. Do you have a good nap? She just is waking up from a nap. Yeah, BB. Is she, yeah, trying to figure out what's going on. So this used to be actually our guest room. Hi, baby girl. Yeah. I love this room so much. It's, it is my favorite room in the house. I did add the wallpaper and it's new. It's peel and stick. But what I love about it is the company, it's called Love Versus Design. They allow you to customize the colors. And so I wanted to do a little bit more of a muted, almost antique look. And I found that through Love Versus Design and I had a lot of fun putting up all the paper in here. Um, the crib new, but it looks old. We actually did find this dresser um, on Marketplace, of course, and my husband last year for Mother's Day stripped it and sanded it down. I love these details. And so this has been in here since I was pregnant, waiting for little Miss Penny to arrive. You're so smiley. Um, I love our row of hooks. I'm just obsessed with peg rails and hooks. And this bunny picture, it's actually public domain art. So you can find a lot of public domain art that you can reproduce for personal use online. And I added this um, antique portrait because it's got a couple of kids in it. And I feel like that mom sometimes. I'm like, what are my kids doing? And they're like, the boys are down the lane. It just cracks me up. Um, I love that this room has all these windows in it. I found this antique cradle. I just had to have it mostly for taking photos. Um, and then this piece, actually, a coworker of mine gave this to me. This was in her son's room for many years. I always admired it. And one day she asked me if I wanted it and I said yes. And her dad bought it at a Salvation Army back in the 70s, I think for like a dollar and 25 cents or something. It's so silly. It's just incredible to me. But um, I use this. I keep a lot of um, pennies, like sheets in here and obviously an old pot. <laughs> I should do more gardening, um, but I love it. It's I store all of her clothing, not in that other dresser. Um, but over here, I've got a shelf that I found, again, on Marketplace. I just wanted something to put up to display things. I made this for Penny when I was expecting, so it's a little cross-stitch just from a kit. I wanted to have it, and then She's got a silhouette too. And then this is her little handprint from Christmas time. Remember when you made that? Um, and then keep a lot of um, stuff like sleep sacks in here, storage. And then over here is the closet. Um, it's really fun because I've got a, a vintage playpen in there just for decor. And I've got all her clothes. And I just, I love how that little space turned out. I had a vision of just a beautiful, feminine, sweet, soft space. After having two little boys, we were so excited to find out that we were having a little girl. And I just knew she had to have like the most feminine, sweet um, little bedroom. And it really seems to match her personality, which is really fun. She's just a very sweet, cuddly mama's girl. This is my daughter's room. She's nearly three. Um, and it's just full of really sentimental pieces, which I feel like is like my favorite thing for a kid's room. So we have like a tapestry that my mother-in-law started when my husband was born. Um, and she gave it to our daughter, which is like so lovely. And actually a tapestry that my nan and I did, my late nan, um, when I was really little. Um, an alphabet tapestry by her like great grandma and a poem and like just some random nice elephant hooks. So it's like, yeah, full of things that are meaningful to us. These are like handmade alphabet tapestries. I love the less attractive uh, video monitor, but you know, <laughs> I need to do these things. And um, yeah, shh, cause the teddies are sleeping. This is actually really cute, I'll show you this. Um, it's uh, this box, like a keepsake box from 
Globetrotter, which are this like great British heritage company. Um, and it has like her birth date and like her name and these cute animals on it. And in it we keep like, you know, like all sentimental bits, like some of the things that she's made, like her mittens from hospital. So I love a nice keepsake box. And um, I like that doesn't look like, you know, like children's tat. <laughs> it looks nice for me too. Um, we have this comfy like G-plan chair, which um, is vintage. And then I got these, my mother-in-law is actually a really talented seamstress and she made these curtains for us out of some fabric I bought. But the best thing actually, I feel like with the children, with the child's room, you need blackout. And so we have these like, these blackout blinds that are like hidden in the frame of the window. And they're so good. And they both come down. So we have the curtains for like aesthetic reasons. And then the less attractive but very practical um, blackout blinds. Yeah, they're so good. Um, and we have another Globetrotter suitcase there actually above her wardrobe. This wardrobe was my husband's grandfather's um, wardrobe. So lots of like handed down things in here. And then her toy racks actually are Ikea spice racks. They were like three pounds each. And I think they look, um, they're like the perfect size for kids' toys. So um, there we go, Ikea spice racks. Um, my mother-in-law made this and her great-grandma made that and then have this like big map of the world that I've been like putting a sticker on the places that she's been. Um, so yeah, lucky girl. I wish I had um, traveled as much as her, um, but she's got three or four stars on there already. Um, so yeah, and this is the only carpeted room in the house actually. Um, everywhere else it's floorboards, um, but she has um, a carpet, a nice wool, like really comfy carpet, so. Yeah, and she also has like this, my late Nan made. Um, she actually made it before I was even married um, and she died before I was pregnant, but she'd like made baby things for when I like one day had a baby. Makes me quite emotional. Anyway, very sweet. And my mother-in-law made this um, gorgeous quilt. Very lucky, we've got some very talented women in our family. Um, if only I were as talented as them. They're, um, yeah, spectacularly talented. I made that terrible lampshade. This room um, was originally like going to be a spare room and then we got pregnant and I was like, let's make it really like cosy and enveloping because really she's playing where we are. She's not like coming and playing in her room. She's not that of that age yet. Um, she wants to be like with her mom and dad and also we want to see her to make sure she's like being safe. So um, we went for like dark because it's a sleep space. And then she was so lucky to have all these people who love her, who made her these beautiful artworks, who bought this beautiful like handmade mobile. So this room is like a bit of me, but has like lots of playful things um, for her to look at and enjoy and like learn as well. We have like, we're big into books. She's big into books. And so every evening our routine is to like sit in this chair and we read like multiple stories. And um, yeah, it's just like ever evolving um, space for her, which feels really special. This is my youngest daughter Skye's bedroom um, and she, well we worked on this together, this room. She is an interior designer in the make and she was really keen to be involved so um, to give her an element of choice and I often do this with my young clients is it's really important they feel involved and they're making decisions but I try to give them edited options. So I was actually really pleasantly surprised that she chose this wallpaper, which is a William Morris um, design uh, called Daisy, um, which is the name of one of my other daughters. 
but it's just really classic and I love that blue and white um, colour scheme and we really took that and ran with it so we did the stripy blind and again another stripe of floral and it has a really pretty little bead trim um, we did obviously lots of blue and white cushions and the paintwork is all in this kind of like a wedgewood blue which is really nice the wardrobe um, is again in this sort of wedgewood blue and has lovely kind of white trim um, and again I've added fabric to the back of back of the doors just to bring in some softness um, and the same fabric is on this really cute little lamp which is from Anthropology, and we had this lampshade made for it and in fact this is quite interesting this section of the room because She's only 10 and I knew that she would be growing in so she'd want some kind of dressing area. So there wasn't room for it because of the radiator. So I decided to build this kind of shelf, which almost like a console with a mirror on it. So when she's older, she can use this as her, her dressing table. Um, but other pieces in the room which are quite important. So we did bring in some yellow to kind of throw in there with, with the blue and blue and white and um, make it feel kind of youthful and fun. This is a piece we found on eBay and I had painted. Um, and then very importantly, her bed, which um, is quite, quite a thing. We had this lovely canopy made because she is only 10. This would be really easy to take down when she's older, um, but she loves it. And she loves kind of going in and feeling really cozy and enclosed. And it's got this beaded trim on it again. Um, she's probably got the best bed in the house, actually. It's the most comfortable. Um, and she actually does make it like this every day with every pillow. I can't imagine where she gets that from. So we've got, oh my goodness, we've got one, two, three, four five fireplaces in the house so this isn't a working fireplace but it is this is a really particularly pretty fireplace actually when we bought the house these tiles were the original tiles were really cracked and sort of falling apart so we did actually replace the tiles on the hearth and on the sides but yeah the the fireplace is original and it we're just really lucky because it does really give the room so much personality and character um, and a really nice focal point as well. This is my middle daughter's bedroom, Tessa's room. Um, and we're right at the top of the house here. So um, it's very peaceful. Um, it's really, really high. So you have this like amazing view of all the gardens um, down below. Um, because this was an addition, this is a loft room that was added on, it doesn't have a fireplace, it doesn't have the kind of natural character, so we needed to add it. So we added it through the wallpaper, um, and actually again, she chose this, she was very specific, um, but um, yeah, she luckily chose this really soft, subtle floral print. And this is from Colfax and Fowler. And actually, we recently did a makeover because she inherited this iron bed. And while I love the traditional look of iron beds, they're actually really uncomfortable to sit up. So, uh, um, to sit up against. So we had this headboard made and kind of tied on, which is a really kind of budget friendly way of making it sort of soft and usable and then we also did this matching valance and underneath here there's oh all her socks and storage you can see down there um and this really pretty quilt um we added as well and she's a big kind of sewer and collector so we added a bookshelf for all her bits and pieces and this really pretty vanity which actually is just from Ikea but we found this really cute um, brass mirror on here um, and it's just a really she's she's quite a manic character so I was quite surprised that she chose such a sort of soft peaceful scheme um, so yeah I was really pleased with her choice 
So, no, this and the bathroom. So we, there's, it's strange because there's lots of little steps in between. So there's three floors, but then in between each floor, there are like steps leading up. So it's, there's almost like, like mezzanines. So it's great because it really gives a sense of space. So nobody feels like they're kind of next door to each other. So my other daughter's room, in fact, my husband's office, which we'll go to in a minute, is on the same floor, but it's so far apart and up these kind of mini stairs that you get this amazing sense of space, which is why we just loved the house because it's just unusual in a Victorian house to really have that sense of space with the stairs and the widths of the hallways as well. Um, so yeah, we're really, really lucky to be here for sure. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.